The Man from Torad is a story about a man who arrives at a Japanese airport from a country called Torad. Many people have claimed this story to be true, but the biggest problem seems to lie with Torad itself. Many have pointed out there is no country by the name of Torad, either today or during the purported period of time when the incident took place, in this case the 1950s, but the mysterious man claimed this country had existed for over a thousand years. This story ends with the man disappearing and leaving no traces. The story of the man from Torad begins in July 1954. On that particular day, a man was said to have arrived at Tokyo International Airport. This man has been described as Caucasian looking with a beard. While his primary luggage is said to have been French, it's been said that he spoke Japanese and many other languages as well. The sequence of events then differs according to which version of the story you've encountered. In one version, this man hands over his passport to be stamped, and the Japanese immigration officers notice something strange. Whilst the passport looks authentic, the country where it's issued Torad was recognised as non-existent, either by the officer or one of their colleagues, indicating that the man should be taken away for interrogation. In another version, the man mentioned that he was from Torad, and when the immigration officer did not believe him, he showed him or her his passport. The next part of the story details the man trying to convince the immigration officers that Torad does exist. According to the traveller, Torad was located between France and Spain, and had by then been in existence for a thousand years. When shown a map, the man pointed to the area occupied by the Principality of Andorra, and was puzzled as to why his country was called Andorra on the map. The Japanese officers insisted that Torad did not exist, and the traveller argued otherwise. Custom officials found him in possession of money from several different European currencies. His passport had been stamped by many airports around the globe, including previous visits to Tokyo. The company he claimed to work for had no knowledge of him, although he had copious amounts of documentation to prove his point. Eventually, the man was held by the officers, as they were suspicious that he might be some kind of criminal. They brought him to a nearby hotel for the night whilst they conducted their investigation. To ensure that the man did not escape during the night, two guards were placed outside his room. The next morning when the officers went to the man's room, they realised that he'd simply vanished, as there were no signs of his escape. Apparently, all of his personal documents, which may serve as evidence for the story's validity, had apparently disappeared as well. This caused a lot of confusion as the police established that he could not have escaped out of the window as the room was several floors up, and there was no balcony. The story of the man from Torad is classified as unresolved for two reasons. First because of the mystery itself, and second because no one seems to know whether or not the whole thing really happened. One of the most notable explanations for this incident is that the man from Torad had somehow passed through a parallel dimension by accident, and ended up at Tokyo Airport. It's been suggested that based on this explanation, there's a parallel Earth which is similar to ours with the exception that the locations called Andorra here is known as Torad over there. Another explanation is that he was a time traveller. Stephen Hawking has questioned that if time travel is possible, why haven't we met any time travellers? But it misses something. What if we have met time travellers without even knowing it? Or what if we have met them but didn't believe them? Take the mysterious case of Sir Victor Goddard. In 1935, he was flying to Edinburgh from Andover, England. And while on this perfectly ordinary flight, he passed over a neglected airfield in Drem, Scotland. The useless airfield was overgrown with foliage, the hangars were falling apart and cows grazed where planes once parked. He continued on his way until he reached his destination at Edinburgh. A few days later, Goodard began his trip back to Andover. He took the same route which would lead him once again over Drem, but before he could get there, he ran into a bizarre storm. Along with high winds and torrential rain, the storm clouds were yellow. It didn't take long for Goodard to become disorientated and lose control of his plane. He tried to regain control by climbing above the yellow clouds, but they seemed to have no end his plane began to fall. Fortunately for him, that's when something unexpected happened. The clouds broke and he could see the ground again. Off in the distance was the Drem airfield. As he approached the airfield, hoping to reorient himself, suddenly the storm vanished and the sky turned bright and sunny. Everything became clear, but something was different this time. The airfield at Drem was no longer abandoned. In fact, it looked good as new. He could see mechanics down below wearing blue overalls, and four planes, each painted yellow, sat on the runway. One was a model he'd never seen before, a monoplane unlike anything in the Royal Air Force in 1935. RAF mechanics in 1935 wore brown overalls, not blue, and there were no yellow planes to his knowledge. When he finally landed, he couldn't help but tell his friends what had happened. As you'd expect, he was met with scepticism, and afterward he mostly kept the story to himself. 
In 1939, the vision that Sir Victor Goodard saw at the Drem airfield actually came to pass. The RAF began to paint their training planes yellow. By that year, even the mechanics overalls had been updated to blue, and of course, the airfield at Drem had made a comeback. Sir Victor Goodard was a senior commander in the Royal Air Force, and many cite his experience as proof of time travel. Surprisingly, misplaced travellers such as the man from Torad have appeared on many occasions. In 1851, a man was found wandering Frankfurt who claimed he was from the country of Laxeria on the continent of Chakria. Another young man who spoke a completely unrecognisable language was caught stealing a loaf of bread in Paris in 1905. He said he was from Lisbia. Finally, it's also entirely possible that this story is merely an urban legend. The story of the man from Torad might not have occurred in the first place, and may have just been the creation of someone's imagination. So that was the story of the man from Torad. I hope you enjoyed and let me know in the comments your thoughts on this bizarre case.